at, a, at the most narrow basic level, uh, just organizing to create a space where you can act as a Christian. So when we have, when we look at the modern world, the modern world is set up that if you actually try to act like a Christian, well, okay, I'll just bring it in. I'll just bring it into what's going on right now. So Kanye West goes on Alex Jones and says he's tired of not having Christ first in business. You know, you can't follow Christ first and be successful or even forget about being successful. You just can't even function in the world if you don't, if you don't put Christ last. And basically what he was saying to Alex Jones is I'm just, I'm tired of this. And I think a lot of people are tired of this. And I think the first thing that would be the case is we're going to, it would be to carve out a space, both social, economic, and spiritual, where you can live according to your conscience and not be punished. You're not going to be punished by the boss. You're not going to be punished by the government. You're not going to be punished by the media. You're not going to be published, punished by popular opinion. So I think that's the first thing that you do. The second thing is, well, what do you, what do, you do with this, this carved out space? Well, I'm sure a lot of them would try to recapture their own churches. So basically you, you sort of withdraw to this position of strength and then you, from that position of strength, plan a return, right? So we, we've seen that throughout history. So that's, that's one likely result. Um, some people might just, you know, like being there and just grow that space as a sort of counter space to this, to what we have in the United States now. So I think those two would be readily uh, apparent pretty early on. Right. And there's a, I think there's something to be said for the strategy of you would uh, hopefully organize people based on their confession or th their denomination um, and, you know, hope that they go into their churches with the intent to re-Christianize them for lack of a better word. Um, so you would have uh Lutherans, Presbyterians, Roman Catholics, Orthodox, or whatever, uh, whatnot else that would, uh, you know, exert pressure, exert pressure onto their churches, and then you know try to bring them back to their more conservative or traditional um, beliefs. You know, try to get try to get them from uh, ever entertaining the notion of gay marriage, uh, of no fault divorce, of all this other. Uh, you could go very controversial and say things like uh, go back to the historic views on contraception, you know, going beyond just the easy topic of should we kill babies? Well, obviously no Christian would ever say yes. Uh, but what about contraception? That used to be a settled thing, but no longer is. Um, there is an idea that does float around every now and then that if we just organize into like a sort of like a, a federation, if you will, all of these conservatives into this one group, since they all agree with each other, basically, uh, or basically not in a general form, but on these core, core issues of what Christianity is, um, but disagree on more specifics. Um, you know, perhaps they can just work on taking back their own churches because we can all agree, uh, so the idea goes, that traditional Calvinism is better than modern Calvinism. Traditional Lutheranism is better than modern Lutheranism. Traditional Roman Catholicism is better than modern Roman Catholicism, so the idea goes. Um, with the justification usually being um, that, you know, if someone is a traditional Calvinist, say, um, most churches would make some, or most denominations would make some statement if they aren't a Calvinist that, oh, it's very dangerous for your salvation. Um, but if you say that you're a modern Calvinist, uh, someone that does all the gay marriage, abortion, uh, divorce, and all this other stuff, <laughs> Most churches would say, yeah, it's you're you're probably going in the way you don't want to um, post mortem. So, um, you know, th there is that there. Uh, there's also the other uh, view from a more utilitarian standpoint. Um, you know, traditional Calvinism produces livable Christian societies, whereas modern Calvinism doesn't. Traditional Lutheranism produces livable traditional Christian societies. Modern Lutheranism doesn't. You can apply that down the board. Um the issue with this strategy um, is that you are going to, uh, one, it's going to inevitably dissolve by design. Um, so a lot of those relationships and friendships that you do make might have issues later down the line. And the second one is that it, tend towards, it tends towards union. Uh, you know, there's going to be an impulse from some people in that alliance to force everyone to amalgamate into some unified, you know, omni-Protestant or omni-Catholic denomination, even though that's uh, bad. I, I don't think anyone would say that's a good thing. Any sane person would. Um, but 
I'm sure you've come across this strategy at some point, or perhaps have even advocated it. I know once upon a time that I did, but now I'm not as sure. Um, any comments there? Yeah, well, I don't. I don't really think at this point you you can uh, get. See, the idea of, of amalgamating all of these is really a Catholic idea, right? That that they they want everybody to go back to Rome. Uh, also, it's it's to a lesser extent an Orthodox idea. They want you know because this idea of a a visible unity is is really what they is what they which i would consider a superficial unity is what they consider to be so important and one is is it desirable and two is it possible well to, i'll start with two i don't think it's really possible at this point these denominations have been around for so long and are so ensconced in their own traditions that unless people just en masse leave them completely and start over with a new understanding of theology I don't see that as actually happening. And the amount of effort it would take to make it happen, well, we've seen, right? That's just the history of the Catholic Church trying to suppress the Reformation. I mean, we've, we see what that looks like if you try to do that. Um, and then second of all, you know, if it's just the unity of an institution, which is sort of what, you know, the Roman Catholic unity is, well, we're all one, but we're just this one institution. I don't think that that's really what Christ is getting at when he says that we're all one in Christ. And I don't think that that's something we would we would not want to gauge oneness or unity at, at, in that way. And so, no, I don't, I don't think we'd want that either.